Hello folks, it's Al here from Al's Geek Lab. Microsoft have just open sourced its 6502 BASIC version 1.1. This is the same BASIC that powered early machines like the Apple II, the Commodore PET, VIC-20, and the MOS Kim-1, and more, as you'll find out. We're going to wander through its origin story, uh, what makes the code special, and even have a little hands-on peek at the source code on GitHub. Now, if you don't know what BASIC is, BASIC is a high-level computer language. So high-level basically means that it's kind of like writing in English, or it's abstracted from the machine level quite a lot. It's easier to write code in. And this was all the rage when the microcomputer market kicked off in the late 1970s and the 80s. The basic interpreter was often the first thing that you would see when you switched on your computer, whether you had a Commodore 64, an Apple II, or a ZX Spectrum. Often the times you would open up your computer, you'd start it up and it would say basic, okay, or ready, or something like that. That was basic. The language, the computer programming language. These days we switch on Windows and so forth. It does not look like that. It's uh, There's no language there. It's a computer operating system. But in those days, we switched on the computers and they were in a programming language rather than an operating system. Sometimes these basics had little hooks that they were sort of pseudo operating systems. They were the bare bones, just enough to load some data off a tape or a disc. Uh, you know, and that was it. Almost all of the early home computers had this basic interpreter. And today I'm specifically talking about version 1.1 of Microsoft's 6502 BASIC. It was so-called 6502 BASIC because that was the chip inside many early super successful home computers. Microsoft's 6502 BASIC was written completely in MOS 6502 assembly. MOS were the chip manufacturers. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Why is it sponsored by PCBWay, I hear you ask? Well, I thought that if you're a maker and you're making projects like with a 6502 CPU, for example, you're gonna need a ROM to put on that 6502 based board. And what better ROM than having the Microsoft 6502 basic ROM. There you go, simple as that. And the best people to help you with your project are gonna obviously be pcbway.com. You can get started from just $5 and they're the best in the industry. So check them out today, pcbway.com. And thank you very much, PCBWay, for sponsoring Al's Geek Lab. Microsoft BASIC was originally developed in 1975, and it was uh, carried on for 6502 in 1978. Uh, it's part of Microsoft's early BASIC family. In fact, BASIC was Microsoft's first product, starting with Altair BASIC for the Intel 8080 CPU way back in 1975. It was ported to various CPUs. The version that we are looking at today has just been released on the internet for anyone to play with. This is version 1.1, which includes fixes to the garbage collector. This version was written by some guy, you may have heard of him, he's called Bill Gates. It also had contributions by a Commodore engineer, John Fagans, in 1978. This GitHub release has been made under the MIT license, which is special because not only are you free to view, modify, and redistribute, you are even free to build upon it. Let's have a wee look-see. Uh, so this is uh, GitHub, github.com forward slash Microsoft, so you know it's legit. Uh, and then it's basic-m6502, the M standing for MOS, I would imagine. Now, if we have a look here, um, this looks very ChatGPT written, but you can see it does have information that they believe, Microsoft believe it's of historical significance. It said this basic interpreter was the software foundation that powered many of the most influential personal computers. Also says that it had cross-platform compatibility, um, and that was because it was available for a number of machines. 
And you can see the sort of development history in here as well. I'll come back to that, but um, it's really cool to see this here. And of course, like everything on GitHub, we look at the source code because that's the whole point of GitHub. And you can see here the full source code of 6502 assembly coded basic all the way down here to line 6955 so pretty cool you can see these different um lines here simulated basic for the 6502 kim basic osi basic commodore basic so these are multi-platform anyway despite this not being microsoft's first release of basic the 6502 version helped anchor microsoft's reputation in the home computer era. The MOS 6502 CPU was cheap, simple, and incredibly influential. The 6502 was the beating heart of the Apple II series of computers launched in 1977. The first Commodore computers, the PET, as well as the later VIC-20 and the Commodore 64, the Atari 400 and 800, the BBC Micro in the UK, as well as the Acorn Electron, and Atom, as well as less common systems, including the chip maker's own machine, the Chem One. Because of this widespread adoption of the MOS 6502 CPU, BASIC for the 6502 spread far and wide, and Microsoft's 6502 BASIC was arguably the most popular version of BASIC for the 6502. From a technical viewpoint, implementing a full BASIC interpreter in constrained memory constrained CPU cycles, limited RAM and so forth, forced clever engineering in things like floating point arithmetic, string handling, arrays, dynamic memory and garbage collection all in 8-bit limits was quite the engineering feat. Before this official release of Microsoft's 6502 BASIC on GitHub, there were several unofficial copies, reverse engineered code, preserved archives and so forth, but this MIT licensed version removes uncertainty around legality, makes it safe for hobbyists, educators and historians to use. Microsoft says build environments have been reconstructed by preservationists. They verified the source can still be reproduced by on byte exact ROMs and Microsoft and other long-standing computer software companies have recently started this welcome trend of freely releasing their source code for prosperity. Microsoft themselves most notably have released the source code for MS-DOS versions 1.25, 2 as well as the MS-DOS based GW basic languages. Also some of the more slightly modern software such as the file manager WinFile from Windows 3.0 and most of the .NET framework components. I mean the fact is that this is all inside this one file and you can look at all of the code here as well as the comments uh, which I think is really cool because a lot of developers have different programming styles and what I can see here is that unless these have been added on after the event in, in, a, in a sneaky way, nobody's actually told us, then basically Bill Gates and a few other people from Commodore have added on these comments at the time that this software was written. Now, that's pretty cool because a lot of people who write software aren't as good as this at commenting code. So this is pretty well documented code, I'd like to say. This is not bad. Now, as I said earlier, the repository includes m6502.asm, the assembly language file. This one file is the entire code base for the 6502 BASIC. It's all written in assembly. These days, software is many, many times larger than this stuff and it often sprawls over hundreds of files. So to see the whole program for the entire computer basically written in one file like this really shows the um, constraints of writing software back in the day. And as I said, um, as far as we know, this is the original handwritten style assembler comments, labels, and the main routines like floating point math, for example. I think it's fascinating looking over the commit information. Back in those days, there was no repositories like Git. The code would be saved to floppy disk or tape, and the file timestamps are reconstructed or preserved as being around 48 years old, and that's part of its charm. If you have a look at this, 
The original code, commit, I guess, was 1976. So the first version of the 6502 would have been around 1977. And you can see the, the version history, um, as they would have probably called it back then. So it starts off in 76, goes 77, 78, all the way up to here. So you can see they've found some bugs and um, commented on all of these things, whether these were written by Bill Gates himself or a combination of people at Commodore, for example. Um, it's quite likely that that is the case. But you can see here there was a serious bug in all versions. So they didn't notice this serious bug for quite some time, which is yeah, pretty cool. Now, note that this code here is not the extended version of the 6502 BASIC, which shipped later with the Commodore 64, etc. Those versions added graphics and sound and hardware-specific features. This version is kind of like the core language. This is the one that worked specifically with the, the CPU, um, but, but really didn't have the unique versions of all of those things like the sound and the graphics that came later. This is a very rudimentary version of the BASIC. Um, some of the features people associate with Commodore BASIC, e.g. the disk commands and so forth, are vendor-specific additions that were added you know, by Commodore. Not, these are not uh, core in this version of BASIC. Also, the code is in assembly language. Modern people reading it will need a bit of patience and some familiarity with 6502 assembly to fully understand what is going on. Um, you know, when you get into past all the comments at the start, there's quite a lot of comments, by the way, at the beginning to like kind of talk about how it actually works, which is again quite nice. But you go in here, then you're starting to look at uh, you know proper. Uh, 6502 assembly you know as you get into it you can see that these are they're all CPU level instructions so this one here for example I'm just picking out of the blue is the to load information into the register A I believe I'm not um, a 6502 assembly coder myself but I you know from what I remember from many years ago this stores in the A register this um, DEC means decrement so decrement a value. BNE, I think, was break if not equal. I can't remember. These are all things uh, that I have forgotten many, many moons ago. Anyway, so what's the point in this 50-year-old code? What the heck can you do with it? And why would you even want it at all? Well, I've got a few perspectives, uh, depending on what floats your boat. Since you're watching Al's Geek Lab and you're far into this video already, I dare say that you're either a hobbyist or maybe you're looking at this from an educational or historic perspective, but I can think of a few reasons. So for hobbyists, I dare say you might want to actually try and assemble this code and run it on an emulator, for example, like the Apple II emulators. There's plenty of those out there. Or maybe you could build your own ROM image and stick it in a real machine that has a 6502 CPU. You can actually still buy the 6502 CPU. So theoretically, you could even build your own 6502 machine and run Microsoft's 6502 basic on it. It's pretty cool. If you're also into the sort of newer shenanigans with FPGAs, uh, perhaps you could burn it into an FPGA and play it with that. If you've got a broken down 6502 machine that's not really working, I guess you could do this as part of fixing it up. Anyway, all of this stuff is highly educational too. Reading the source code will teach you on how programming and languages and interpreters used to work, and it will show you parsing and memory management, floating point math, and tiny environments with hardly any memory. It will give you an appreciation of how computers, even modern day ones, work at their machine level, at the core. And that sort of stuff is not taught enough these days, but it could be a really great history lesson too. And if you're into in-depth retro projects, you could even combine the source code with modern tools to extend it or port hardware-specific features, integrate with other vintage hardware, a lot, a lot of different things you could do. And of course, if you're just someone that's a bit curious, this is a great way to explore the history and to see the code that was written by Bill Gates and Rick Wyland in their early days. So Microsoft opening 6502 basic version 1.1 is actually a pretty decent gift to people like us that enjoy digging into the roots of computing. I hope the once super closed source proprietary Castle Microsoft continues its new track record of opening historically significant stuff up. 
I'd love to see Windows 3.1 or 3.1.1 or Microsoft 6.2, maybe even Windows 9X opened up someday soon. Anyways, since you're into the stuff, why don't you pop over and check out Al's Geek Lab on Patreon. The lovely people that you're seeing down the screen right now did so, and now they're supporters. And for their support, they get early release, ad-free videos, and bonus content too. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. And don't forget, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, then click that subscribe button now for lots more retro computing goodness. If you like this video, I'd also really appreciate a thumbs up too. It tells YouTube that I'm doing the right thing. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching and be excellent to each other.